We're going to tackle the new MOC with no 5-star light cones or 5-star Eidolons. So we're going to go for the QQ build on the first side, and then we're going to go for an Akron, Japard, Full Nihility with Pela and Silverwolf for the second side. So as for this side, right, uh, Luolcha does actually really help breaking down the shield of the stupid dinosaur because this dinosaur is obnoxious and overall it's not too much of a problem because once you break the shield it just takes so much increased damage that it dies so fast. The problem is that if you want to break it fast and kill it fast then you're locked into using certain units. So if you're not on element or using Ron May, right, it makes it a lot tougher to break and then in turn kill the dino. But we're going to pretty much be attacking with Luwacha every single time towards it and then also using our ults to hopefully just chip away, you know, its toughness bar. So once it does break, then we'll focus our majority of like our main attacks onto it. So QQ is pretty much only focusing on the left enemy right now. Once the right enemy breaks, we'll then switch over and then just focus on the dinosaur. So right now, we don't want to use the skill point because we're actually going to be pretty low on skill points going to the next QQ turn because we're not going to have our Sparkle uh, ult up, right? So we're only going to have it going to be like two to four skill points depending on how the turn goes. Okay, so we did a the, the good amount of damage after it was broken. So the hit that actually breaks, even that doesn't deal a lot of damage. So we did get a Tarki, which is perfect, so we can clean it up with only one cycle on the first side, and we can go into Kokolia with 29. Okay, we got lucky and we triggered a Tarki. Now hopefully with these four skill points that we get from Sparkle's ult, we can trigger our four of a kind. One more? One more? Come on, please! Please, Q- Yes! Thank you, QQ. Same concept as the last time. We're going to focus on Kokolia and then deal the damage to the dinosaur once we end up breaking it with all of our chip damage. Okay. Unfortunately, we did, we'd have to wait a little bit. We have to lag on Luotra's ult just because he wouldn't have gained that stack otherwise. And now we have the ult for Ranmei back once more. And... This is going to lead into Sparkle's turns. So then we're going to go right into QQ. And unfortunately, because of the way the skill points turned out, just like I said last time, how we're pretty low on skill points, our QQ took so many skill points for the last attack that we actually have to forego the Ronmei buff unless we were going to get super lucky and somehow get four of a kind with like uh, one QQ skill, which is extremely unlikely. Now, unfortunately, because Ron May is so slow, um, my Sparkle actually outspeeds her once again. So now we're going to have two attacks that are completely unbuffed from Ron May, which is not ideal. However, if we can get lucky with some Atarkis, then we can kind of make up the difference, which we didn't hear, but... Perfect, so now we can break the dinosaur, and now we can focus our attacks on the dinosaur, finally. Now, unfortunately, Sparkle just got frozen, which is extremely unfortunate. And the worst part is that we don't even have a skill point with Luocha to unfreeze her. So now her next turn is even going to go even further. So she essentially just lost like one and a half turns. But at least we're fully buffed up going into the next one. So hopefully if we can finish this entire thing in three cycles, then I'm pretty satisfied with that. Now we have skill points to use, but we'll use it on... What just happened? Why did Luocha... Oh, I guess Luocha cut in front. That was a weird animation. It's kind of like Branya, because you expect the character to go to the front, but then another character just randomly shows up. Unfortunately, we got unlucky and we got four of a kind without being able to use any skill points. But hopefully we can output enough damage. Come on, QQ. We still have one more action after this. Pretty good, pretty good. Now that was clutch because the shield is not going to revive. And now we're going to have another chance. Still no Atarki. Just come on. 
Okay, so now we're pretty much going to have to rely on the MOC buff to take it out. So we're at four stacks right now, which means we need two more hits. So we'll attack and now we're at five. And then Luocha is going to be our sixth attack. And then hopefully it drops with enough, enough damage to kill Kukulia. Perfect. So now we're on the Acheron side, and luckily we do have a trend on Japard, which makes our skill point generation, or our slashed dream point generation, extremely good. Like we have a, a ton of points, where a lot of times we're actually over capping. So now, thanks to the technique on Pela, we get the ult up immediately, and that's why we use Pela's instead of Acheron's technique. And then now, we're at exactly three points of uh, Quadrivalent asc Ascendance, so we'll just pop Akron's ult right now, and then attack with Japard, and then because of that MOC buff thing, right, uh, every single attack essentially is going to translate to a point of Slash Dream for Akron, so we're going to be getting a ton of points overall, regardless of whether we skill or basic with Japard. But we will be skilling a ton with Japard just so we can get extra freezes and mainly so we can build up more energy so we can keep our shield uptime because we do have kind of a rough time keeping our shields if we're only basicing with Japard. And as for now, we'll just put 9 points of the Crimson Knot on the enemy and then go immediately into an Acheron ult again. Okay, it doesn't actually matter too much that it didn't die. So hopefully we can take it out in this cycle, and then go into Aventurine. Now if we can freeze, it's very good, because if we can freeze, then we don't have to deal with the max HP reduction, as long as we can kill it. Which I do believe we will be able to, because we're going to be getting enough stacks of our... Ooh, actually, we're only at two stacks, so hopefully this break will just do it. Which it didn't. So, now, we're pretty much going to have to rely on the MOC buff. So now we're at four stacks, and then five stacks, and the only way we're going to be able to get the sixth stack is by using Palo's ult early. So that is unfortunate, but what can you do? Yeah, so we'll just build up a little bit of energy with Japard here. And then... Okay, I guess Orworld use Acheron. It, it doesn't actually make too much of a difference, because... Technically, if we have the debuffs on Adventuring, it's extremely important, because that defense shred is going to get us to 100%, and getting Acheron's ult's actually not as hard as getting Pela's ult, ironically. Because it takes two turns for Pela, but then with Acheron, it can be like a turn and a half. And now, even though we're on Good Night and Sleep Well, we still get the extra point thanks to the MOC buff. So, very, very nice. Okay, so luckily, thanks to Japard's revive, we do get another life out of him, which is very, very helpful. And now we do have the ult up, which is perfect. So even though we're going to be wasting a stack here, it's fine because the defense shred is more important. And now this Akron ult is also going to break, which means we're going to be gambling a lot less, which, thank God, because normally I'd say gambling... Normally I'd say I'd, li I'd, like, I'd like just a little bit of gambling, but when it comes to this Aventurine boss, I hate gambling. Now, even though it's already at 9 stacks... Yeah, I guess actually, never mind. We'll just go straight into the ult. Build up the Crimson Knot going forward. Because we could have basic and then also basic with Pela, and then re-upped that Death Shred from the Resolution Light Cone. Now, here, we'll just use Pela's ult because it's going to reduce our energy. Right, with its next attack, so at least that way we don't uh, suffer. Build up more energy for Japard's ultimate. And I'll be completely honest, I haven't uh, figured out exactly how the point system works with uh, the Aventurine boss. So I need to actually read his thing, because I, I skimmed over it and it didn't make complete sense to me. 
So I understand like you have like you get a number and if you get less you lose and if you get more you win but I haven't figured out exactly why. Sometimes you need like four characters turns to go and sometimes you only need one. So um, we'll figure that out in due time. And now even though a basic is going to get our ult up, a skill is going to get us that additional res down which is extremely important. We just want as much debuffs as possible or as many debuffs on Aventurine as possible because we really need our ults to just deal massive amounts of damage and luckily we're going to get our ult up before Aventurine's turn and we might even be able to break. Well, this is going to be close. Oh very close. Oh perfect okay. Pushed him back regardless. I'm actually not sure why Aventurine got pushed back there. But it doesn't matter because we're just outputting a ton of damage and there's just so many stacks in this entire team and of course the MOC buff helps out a ton so now one more gamble okay or no not one more gamble we might just be able to clear this up without visiting the casino and we can clean it up with one more application of res pen or defense down and we're at nine stacks so can we clean this up in five cycles? Two, three, and... Okay, 1% Acheron. You may have the honors. Clean it up, please. Beautiful. Let's get into the builds. So for the first team on QQ, we did run Genius Repose. We had uh, Rudolin Arena and the Quantum set. Meshing Cogs on Ron May. If I remember correctly, unfortunately, our break effect was like 165, so not completely maxed out, but that's fine. Past in the future on Sparkle, and then post-op conversation, the extra energy regeneration helps get more ults to break the dinos. Very helpful. And Akron is on good night and sleep well, kind of like a rainbow set, and we do have tutorial on Silverwolf and Vonwack. Very helpful, along with resolution on Pela which is pretty nice as well. And Japar, of course, is on trend just to help get a ton, ton of Crimson Knot stacks or Slashed Dream stacks. So join the Discord, subscribe, like the video, comment, and thanks for watching. Adios.